Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a closer look for this Halloween season here on the Multimedia Chronicles. Today, today we're going to be taking an up-close look at a set that I've been meaning to do a spotlight on for a very, very long time. I bought this long before even the days of Blu-ray. In fact, I think I bought this before I even started doing the Multimedia Chronicles. That's how long I've had this set. I'm, of course, talking about... The Ed Wood Box. Yes, the definitive collection of the uh, most notable works of the man himself, the most incompetent director who ever lived, Ed Wood. And that's what we're going to talk about today on the Multimedia Chronicles. <laughs> Let's head on down to the black box and check out the pink box. Well, if you're an Ed Wood fan, this is definitely a set to have on your shelf. The Ed Wood box. Check it out in beautiful pink Angora. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head if they actually had a fuzzy version of this. That, that just seems like a logical thing that they would do but uh i don't know i think i think they just kind of went with this you know appearance of angora so if we look on the back so i mean it's 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 just completely ensconced in pink angora throughout so it's very appropriately tacky even the bottom there you go and what we have here is basically a flimsy box that uh, houses six dvd keep cases so let's take a closer look here and we'll see what all is in them. So if you take a look at the back, you can just kind of get a quick overview of what all is in there. So there's basically five movies and a two-hour long documentary all about the life and times of Ed Wood. Very, very cool indeed. So if you're a fan, I mean, this really is a definitive collection. I mean, you have all of his biggest, most well-known films here and, uh, and a wonderful, uh, really meaty documentary all about his life and everything. So... Let's uh, take a look here. So we just slide them out. Just take a quick look at the box itself. As you can see, I mean, it's just this really flimsy cardboard. It it looks more impressive on the shelf than it actually physically is. But <laughs> whatever. What can you do? Yeah. I got this so long ago. I don't even remember what I paid for it. But it was, uh, it was quite some time ago. So going in chronological order here, we have the legendary... Glenn or Glenda. Now, you got to understand the era that this came out in. I mean, th this was really uh, risque stuff at the time. I mean, the whole concept of, of homosexuality and cross-dressing and everything was, was very frowned upon at the time. And it was just such a huge taboo. So this was a pretty daring thing to do, I have to say. Basically, Ed Wood, in his <laughs> debut uh, you know, feature film, saying, Hey, I am a cross-dresser, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. And uh, good on him for that, you know. I mean, be true to yourself, you know. That's that's awesome. But uh, he was definitely ahead of his time as far as uh, you know coming out and being honest about uh, what he what he was into and what his thing was. And uh, essentially, this this movie is his plea for acceptance, uh, not just for himself, but for others who are you know similarly uh, interested in such things. And you know, good on him for that. I think it's awesome. Uh, now, as for the movie itself, it is absolutely ridiculous and over the top. I mean, uh, it's it, you know you're in trouble when uh, the uh, <laughs> the the gloom and doom intro by Bela Lugosi is nigh on incomprehensible, but uh, it, it's you know still lots of fun. I mean, you, you're in for a good time for sure, and uh, and it does kind of play around quite a bit with a lot of uh, society's perceptions of such things at the time and. And looking at them now, I mean, it was showing them how ridiculous they were at the time. There's nothing on the back here, just a chapter list on the front. Um, but, I mean, they look even more ridiculous now in our, well, I'd like to say more enlightened age, but there's still still a long way to go, I think. Next up, we have Jailbait. Yeah, there you go. With uh, Ed's girlfriend, Dolores Fuller, in it, actually. 
Very cool. And and Steve Reeves, oh my god, introducing Steve Reeves, Hercules himself, in his film debut, right here, the legend himself. <laughs> there you go. And you even get to see him with his shirt off. Big manly man that he is. So, I mean, I wonder if this was what got him Hercules, you know, just seeing how awesome he looked with his shirt off. He's like, get that man for Hercules. Yeah, right. Anyway, uh... So there you go, just kind of a you know bit of a pot boiler detective story. Uh, honestly, it's been so long since I've watched this, I don't even remember half of it. But uh, you know, with all of these movies, the main thing I remember about them is having a lot of fun with them and just really enjoying uh, the whole thing. I mean, the wonderful thing about Ed Wood is there was no denying that he was a, an incredibly enthusiastic filmmaker, and the man definitely had vision. You know, he really had vision. What he didn't have was skill. <laughs> so he's he, he has this serious artistic vision, but he's just completely incompetent at expressing it. Um, yet, it, it, it still it essentially gave birth to the whole it's so bad, it's good era, you know? I mean, it really did. And uh, here we got Tor Johnson appearing uh, again Dolores Fuller again Bella Lugosi again uh, great stuff I mean this is this is such a, a perfect collection of the 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 Ed Wood stable of players oh wow they really went all out with the label on that one didn't they you can you can you can read it kind of there you go and again nothing but a chapter list there um, if you've seen uh, Tim Burton's movie about Ed Wood um, it's such a loving tribute to Ed Wood and, and his enthusiasm for film and such, and wonderfully played by Johnny Depp, uh, and just such a fun movie. Um, I, I definitely recommend watching that movie around and, and then watching all of the originals because you'll get so much more uh, out of both experiences. I, I mean, do it either way. I mean, watch the movies first, then Ed Wood, or watch Ed Wood first, then the movies. I mean, either way, you're going to have an absolute blast, and the two really complement each other beautifully. Uh, so here we go. This is, of course, the the legendary Plan 9 from Outer Space. As as uh, Johnny Depp, uh, as Ed Wood says in the, uh, in, in the Tim Burton movie, this is the one I'll be remembered for. And boy, was that ever true. <laughs> Definitely the one he's remembered for. Bela Lugosi's final film with his last remaining scenes being filled in by Ed's chiropractor, who was looked nothing like Bela Lugosi. <laughs> Uh, Vampira, of course, Tor Johnson again. Uh, so here we have the most incompetent alien invasion ever. And uh, the aliens in this are just so hilariously ineffective that uh, you, you, you just can't help but love them. <laughs> great, great stuff. This is such a fun movie and uh, a midnight matinee favorite for sure. And rightly so. And just before we continue with the uh, last couple selections from the box set, I need to mention, I actually do have a second edition of Plan 9 from Outer Space. And the reason I have this edition is it actually has different extras than the one that's in the box set. So it says, bonus, the Ed Wood story. Well, actually, they make it sound like it's a docu like a standalone documentary, but it actually isn't. What it is, is individual interviews with all these different fine folks. We got uh, you know interviews with Johnny Depp, Martin Landau, Dolores Fuller, uh, Vampira, uh, who's that? It's got Tor Johnson, Bella Lugosi, and, uh, yeah, great. Just, just great. So nice, really fun little interviews, uh, folks giving their reminiscences about, about knowing Ed or working with Ed or just what they like about him and things like that. And it's, uh, it's great stuff. Now, the thing I found odd about this particular DVD, and you don't see this very often, just some of the budget labels, I think, did this is um, there, there's a corner bug throughout the whole frickin' movie with the DVD company's logo on the screen. Like, really? Seriously? Like, this is this TV or is this a DVD that I bought for money? You know, like, that, that was just ridiculous. I can't believe they, they watermarked it. Like, seriously? I mean, first off, I mean, the movie's in the public domain. So why are you so concerned about someone stealing your particular print of it? It's not even a particularly pristine print. The, uh, the image one from the box set is actually way better. So, fuck you and your watermark. Anyway, yeah. But worth having, as I say, just to have the additional interviews. I mean, if you're a fan of, uh, of Ed and his crew, then this is definitely a nice, nice addition to have. 
And then finally, the last movie in the batch, we have Night of the Ghouls. Yes, there we go. So once again, uh, with Tor Johnson, we actually have Criswell in this in more of a uh, central role, which is quite nice. He just kind of had some cameo appearances in some of the other films. But it's great to see him taking more, uh, you know, center stage. And no Dolores Fuller this time. I think they had actually split up by this point. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, I should mention, I'm pretty sure this one is not in color. No, it's not. It's all, they're all black and white. Um, I mean, because color film's expensive. <laughs> one thing Ed was good at was getting films made. He was, he was a consummate uh, showman and uh, businessman and negotiator. And he could uh, easily convince, you know, fairly easily convince studios to put up money for these productions. And he would make them on a shoestring budget. And I mean, it's this very simple financial model. I'll make them cheap, therefore your profit margin will be higher. Simple as that. And that's kind of how he would sell the studios on it, which uh, is actually really clever when you think about it. I mean, uh, bottom line is... Uh, you know, as much as people criticize Ed Wood, this is a man who successfully made several movies in Hollywood with the, within the Hollywood system. You know, I mean, not all of us are so lucky. So you got to give credit where credit's due. I mean, the man may have been uh, questionable in his skill as a director, but boy, did he ever know how to get movies made. And you got to give him props for that. And then finally, we have The Haunted World of Edward D. Wood Jr., a wonderful in-depth documentary loaded with interviews and archival footage all about the life of the man himself. Very cool. So in addition to the you know nearly two-hour long, or, uh, yeah, nearly two-hour long, 112-minute long uh, featurette, or uh, documentary, we've got a whole bunch of additional special features there as well. So uh, yeah, a very nice... Uh, very nice capper to the uh, to the box set for sure. And there we go. So let's uh, let's cram everything back into the box, shall we? Here we go. So going back to front, we got Haunted World of Ed Wood. We got Night of the Ghouls. Plan Nine from Outer Space. Bride of the Monster. Jailbait and Glenn or Glenda. And there's references to pretty much all of these movies in the Tim Burton movie as well. Okay, speaking of the Tim Burton movie, I also have the Tim Burton movie. I'm pretty sure there's a Blu-ray of this out by now. I just haven't got around to upgrading. But this is the special edition. There was actually another special edition version that was released uh, prior to this, but it was quickly pulled. There was some... One of the extras or something they hadn't properly cleared and there's some kind of rights issue so they had to pull the original edition so if you ever find that one in the wild for a decent price grab it it's a bit of a collector's item this is the uh the re-release that was done a few years later when they cleared everything um i i don't know specifically what extra caused the issue in question but uh oh and look at that there we go so we got just a nice little movie poster there and and there we go. This is a wonderful film. Uh, snagged Martin Landau the Academy Award for his uh, exceptional performance as Bela Lugosi. And, uh, and good on him, too. I mean, the, he sadly passed away a few years later. But uh, uh, what a wonderful actor. I've always really liked Martin Landau. Um, I always remember him as a kid from Space 1999, of course. That was the thing I mainly knew him from. But, uh, yeah, great movie and a wonderful companion to the actual works of the man himself. So... I cannot recommend either one of these highly enough. If you're a fan of the uh, so bad is good stuff like I am, then you definitely need to pick these up. You'll have an absolute blast. This is this is the man who made that that concept of movies so bad they're good um, a thing. You know, he he didn't do that intentionally. I mean, he thought he was making high art, but you know, they're still entertaining, just not in the way he probably intended them to be. So there you go. Everything I have to do with the legendary director, the greatest director of our time, Ed Edward D. Wood Jr. Ed Edward, yes. Ed, Eddie, and Edward? No. Um, great stuff. Can't say enough good things about it. So much fun. Check it out if you can. Um, and if any of these have come out on Blu-ray since then, well, get them on Blu-ray. I actually didn't look into that. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure at least Plan 9 is out on Blu-ray by now. 
Um, yeah, so quick thank you to my Patreon sponsors, especially Get Your Gorgeous On and Kyle Pellegree. Really appreciate the ongoing support, guys. And, uh, yeah, so thanks to everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara. Thank you.